Over yep. to uh, Richard Jobs. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, this was a um, a trip I did uh, just recently, in, just last month, and it was uh, um, in the in the in the in my mind for several years. I'd always wanted to go to China, so I thought I would um, take the opportunity to uh, to organise it, and it all sort of happened. And um, uh, I, so. Uh, um, the route there is shown on the map. Uh, I started started in Hong Kong. It was a, it was about a three week tour. I went um, went essentially by myself. Um, started in Hong Kong, uh, spent a few days there. Then went to Shenzhen, took a flight up to uh, Chongqing, and then cruised down the Yangtze River um, for three days down to Yichang and then took a train up to uh, Xi'an and then another train to Shanghai and that took um, just on just nearly three weeks and um, there's a bit of a re registration problem there but uh, that's better um, so something's happened strange there but never mind um, and uh, while I was uh, thinking of um, as I was sort of getting this tour together I was also having a bit of a um, issue with my electric car, the motor in the car, which was um, uh, has a regeneration capability because it's an AC motor, and um, <coughs> uh, its its performance is such that uh, when you do when you apply the the foot brake, the regeneration occurs over a very short space of time, like about a, a cup, just a second or so, and it's really not not optimum. It's a, like a, a bit of a jerky effect in, in that it pulls the car up, and it, you get regeneration, and you get current flowing back into the battery as you're supposed to. So you are getting a getting the effect. But what I what I would have would like is to have have this effect ha happening over a much longer period, so that it's much more gentle, so that it has a um, it still has, it is able to recover more energy from the battery and in, in doing that slowing down. So you, you slow down more, more um, uh, smoothly and you recover more energy from the battery and it's generally a better result. So um, what I, uh, uh, I was able to contact the, um, the manufacturer of the, of the motor with some difficulty, I got onto the website to, to uh, start with and uh, eventually got on to um, a person who could speak English and they uh, uh, essentially invited me to, uh, to come on over and, um, and, and uh, you're welcome in the factory and um, just bring your controller up with you and we can do the, the software change on the fly while you're in the factory for the day. So that's fantastic. That was a really um, great idea in theory <coughs> but um, uh, um, it, it's really, it was really impractical for me to take the controller, which is about the size of a, it's quite large, and lug that up there, and then, then, then have them change it, and then sort of firstly get into the country, and then get out of the country. So that was all too hard. <coughs> so ne nevertheless, I decided to pursue with with the visit and uh, uh, see what would would uh, how that would pan out. So what eventually did happen was that I was able to um, um, engage a. Um, a, a translator in Shenzhen, who you can just um, just uh, Google, um, you know, the Shenzhen translation services, or and up come dozens of these people who sell their services for the for the for whatever you want. And I got a, um, a woman to help me uh, translate through the the whole process of getting to the factory and uh, uh, getting me in a taxi and going out and meeting the people and coming home. It was a it was a great experience, and it was all. Um, I, um, it was really, it, it was, it was good. We, uh, I, I saw something that you wouldn't normally, normally see as a tourist. So uh, that's the sort of background of the. That was part of the tour, and the rest of the, rest of the, uh, the tour was was a sort of a more of a holiday. So uh, I started in Hong Kong, and um, um, we can just get this thing to uh, play. This is a bit of a movie here, just to give you the idea if you've ever been to. These um, Asian places is the first time, the second time I've been to Hong Kong, but it's just full of people everywhere, lots of action and lots of um, lots of sort of um, act activity. Um, no, it's going to run. Uh, uh, there's a little movie there that's not going to work. Um, anyway, um, this is just a couple of screenshots of the movie, and um, you can see. Um, 
this is just that the, the, the tram actually went through this street here and there were, there were just people doing their market um, thing. This was on a week, just on a weekday. And um, food, uh, lots of food stores and things. Um, I used to, um, I'd, I'd, I'd uh, spend some time at breakfast every morning sort of planning what I was going to do the day. And uh, uh, the Lonely Planet guy said, told me I should go to this cafe and, and eat the, um, these uh, egg tarts, which are these um, uh, things here, like a custard tart. They're absolutely delicious. Um, the tea is usually, um, is rather horrible. It's full of, it's made of condensed milk and sweet and uh, quite, quite horrible. Um, yeah, well, I, I, had a, I had the Sprite there because this was the first day and I was conscious of not um, drinking the water and so I just got some lemonade, so you, 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 you've got to be aware of the water, generally speaking. Um, this uh, scaffolding was quite a common um, uh, site. Uh, in this case, they're just um, uh, working on the, on the facade of the building because um, there's a... Um, a requirement apparently to make sure that the uh, the, the facades are, are safe from uh, things falling off, which uh, which obviously is a, is a safety hazard. And that sort of has to be done on a, on a regular basis. Um, they take the they just fix up all the facades and, and fix the um, air conditioning pipes and make the place look a bit better. Um, these people, these uh, uh, workers, have just climbed up here from the street, uh, up on these scaffolding uh, uh, bamboo poles, and just and they were just set. So continuing to set them up. Over here there's a, um, a marketplace uh, happening down, down in the street and then um, a lot of um, buildings that have been abandoned essentially and are, and are, and are ready for demolition to uh, um, old sort of classic parts of Hong Kong just being, being uh, wiped out or you know, being taken over by the modern buildings. Um, got up to Shenzhen, this is um, a subway system for Shenzhen Every city I went to, they, they all um, all have a, a brand new um, subway system. It was one, all the ones I went to, um, and they're actually squeaky clean and uh, and modern and fast and safe and and, and, and full of people. Um, Shenzhen, this is um, just uh, the, this is the town centre, um, big massive area of cement and. and and Asheville, and um, in this case, it was a particularly sort of a nice day, and there was uh, um, lots of these. You know, just scan the camera around; there's big buildings e everywhere, rather ugly, strange-looking ones. Um, there's, a, there's a video. This one's here. Is the, there's a civic centre. This is, you can see this is about a five-story building here, an enormous uh, curved roof that, that sort of went up like this, and it was an enormous building. Um, let's see if we can get this to work. Um, no, that's not going to work. Um, and this is this is Shenzhen um, in, the, in another part of the city. Uh, they're, they're, this is the, the, going to be the biggest building they've got in the city. It's still still in progress, hundred and something stories. Um, in the foreground, there's a um, uh, work with more undergrounding. They're just digging up the whole main street here and putting in a, another underground system. Uh, it's a um, Disneyland type arrangement in the, in the city um, with uh, the monorail and, and the um, Eiffel Tower and uh, all sorts of, I guess there's, an, there's a, um, um, an opera house there somewhere, somewhere in the background. Anyway, this, I got to the, um, um, the sort of the electronics part of the city and um, this one here is uh, it's like a department store. You can see there's some uh, uh, there's three or four um, stories. You can't it's on the video, but unfortunately they're not playing. Um, but this this you could walk through this, and there were these little booths um, and little stalls where people were selling um, all the electronic parts that go to make mobile phones and and all you know all sorts of electronic equipment. And they'd be selling the the most basic parts, like the little um, uh, resistor packs and the, and the wheels, reels and reels of components and things, and and the integrated circuits and things, and there were floors and floors of these people all, do, all doing the same thing, doing this, doing the, the trading. I suppose it was wholesaling the the um, the parts. Um, and then 
um, they didn't seem to care much about the the in inherent beauty of this old building. There was a beautiful old tiled floor in this this particular building, and they they sort of you know work put their things straight over it. it was a, anyway, um, this is the um, the motor and com um, controller combination that I have in in my car. Um, it's uh, it's, it runs a 144 volt DC uh, system, um, three three phase output AC output going coming coming out into the into the motor, um, and uh, um, so it's actually 150 newton meter peak torque, actually not not 50. Um, Anyway, the the what I was uh, what I what I thought I could see in terms of the performance when I just looked at it with a with a peak ammeter was uh, at at a certain speed um, I was uh, measuring a battery generation current of about 100 amps um, over a period of about one second and what I wanted to do was measure that a bit more accurately so I could take that up to the factory and see if they could um, uh, help me improve the performance. Um, so I sent this um, um, just a sketch up to them and, and to see uh, to tell them what the problem was. I, I described it like this, and they came back with this curve here, that saying that they could probably do something like this, which is exactly well. I really want I really want something like this, where you, where you apply the apply the brake, and then the regeneration current would build up, and it would stay much the same until you turn the brake off there, and it would drop off. What they sent back was a, 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 a thing that would uh, profile that would sort of do that, and I thought, oh, that's not bad. We we'll see if we can see if we can get them to do that. Um, my friend Peter Camp Smith, he, who's who's here, designed a um, uh, um, an instrumentation amplifier, which is which is this, this here. So put it in a in a box, sealed box, and we uh, with that with the with by plugging that into the um, a small oscilloscope. I've got digital digital storage oscilloscope. We could uh, record the the results and um, uh, get some real data off the actual car as it was in 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 a, in a regeneration mode. <clears throat> so this is real data when we which we did up in the hills just before I left. Um, brake, the application of the brake is just is just this point here, and then that uh, um, reveals a. Um, uh, regeneration current of, of about taking about two seconds, and with a with a peak of about 50 amps, which is um, uh, pretty believable. Another one was uh, a, a two applications, one after another, um, over again over about two seconds, and going back to about 70 amps peak, and then uh, coming down a hill, a longer hill, and uh, uh, constant application of the of the brakes on and off and on and off and we uh, we recorded that sort of um, result so that, that was all sort of believable and then we we present I presented this to the um, the people in the factory and um, after we had lunch <laughs> um, lunch was a, was a was a bit of fun um, you, you just go to the big um, uh, place and they'd, they'd give you whatever you want, you point to the stuff and they'd give lots of nice sort of food, like a big uh, um, Bay Marie type thing. And then it would be served on a steel plate with um, different little things and you'd have whatever you like. I've got I had a piece of fish and stuff. And then the, the, uh, uh, the enormous buckets of um, rice there where you just um, hope nobody's spat into the stuff and you just uh, <laughs> spoon that out. <laughs> Um, and then there was, a, there was a big canteen there with uh, hundreds of people sitting around on benches just you know, having their lunch. Anyway, then we got to the, uh, um, the, the well this is this is actually coming into the factory, that's out of order actually. Um, but this is just the, the factory itself. Uh, it was about half an hour out of the city and we, we'd, we'd got in a taxi, had to go there by, by taxi, eventually got to the place. and. Um, the uh, my um, interpreters got got me in and um, did all the right things, and then we had to leave the taxi and had to walk into this sort of compound. And um, the uh, the engineering, the whole factory was uh, in here somewhere. We went round a corner into the the office block, and there was a meeting room where we had the, had our discussions. And then um, around the corner was was the factory where we could go in and see the uh, 
um, the actual factory where they actually make the motors and had, had pallets and pallets full of um, of, um, of batteries, uh, not batteries, but motors and motor parts, laminations, windings, all this stuff. And there were guys sitting around them um, sleeping and then they, after lunch they got up and sort of woke up and uh, um, continued to make these, um, actually assemble the motors. Also it's a hotel as well. Yeah, yeah they, they, they shut the place, they have a sort of a siesta uh, for about a period of one hour where they play music, sort of light, sort of, um, it, it, I heard a lot of fur release, so there was some sort of common music that was often fading, played in, in, uh, in lifts and things. And then all of a sudden, at sort of one minute to one, it would just suddenly stop, and the lights would the lights had all been dimmed, the lights would come back on again, and everybody would yeah. crank up again, they'd all go back to work. Um, so uh, anyway, we had a we had a meeting, uh, with, and uh, uh, this is their uh, their sort of um, front front office um, where we we sort of finished up. Um, interesting. I asked the, um, the 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 my agent what this why 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 were these in red and why was this in black and the reason is that apparently um, to write electrics in Chinese you need all those characters and to write Shenzhen Great then you need all that which is interesting. Um, so anyway, this is the curve we had on the wall here. We we were trying to. Um, on the, on, the wall, wall, on the whiteboard trying to uh, work out what was actually going on. What they pointed out, rightly, is that um, there's, a, there's a relationship between the, the power and the, the speed of the, the motor, and, the, and that actually goes between naught at naught speed, and it actually goes to, it eventually goes to naught at a very high speed as well. So um, you can't keep recovering energy from a motor that's stopped. <laughs> so there's a there's a, a, a sweet spot of, of, of energy in the middle of the band here which is where the where you can actually recover the energy from. Uh, and, and that's really what they were um, that, that that's what they were sort of talking about in great detail in the um, in the in the meeting I, and sort of trying to work out what, what the range of operating point was. And um, I guess that's the point that I've, I've missed all together. You, you can't get, um, you can't suck blood. If the thing's not moving, you're not going to get any energy out of it anyway. So it's, it's quite limited what's, what's possible to be recovered. So um, why, can't, why can't you put dynamo in one or two of the wheels? Oh, you just got one, one motor. It, 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 it is acting, the motor is acting as a dynamo. Yeah, yeah but if, if the motor's not working, but the car's still running. No, no, but the, the well, there's only so much energy that's available, and it's related to the speed of the whatever's moving. And as the motor sl slows down, you will uh, you will eventually run out of capacity to get anything. But, but we, we're really specifically talking about recovering energy out of my out of the particular way that it's set up. So um, anyway, never, notwithstanding that, that I reckon that we could still. They, I reckon they could still provide some uh, change in their uh, operating code to give a better profile error, and that's what they have said they can do. Um, just send me a, an, up, an upload of code. But the, the risk to me is that I've got to pull my pull the thing apart and then do the do the trans to do the an upgrade and hope the hell it still works. And and that's um, highly risky, really. And I probably won't do it. <laughs> um, but uh, so, uh, and I would also probably have an issue with the fact that the vehicle is actually um, registered, and and um, the the it's it, you, the, there's a limit to what the Department of Transport really theoretically should allow you to do. I think that's my opinion. Really, they can't just anyway. But it's a bit of a risk for all for everybody. So. Nothing will probably come of this, but it was still a, a good experience. And um, I did I did score a, a Great Land Electrics uh, shirt. Which unfortunately is a, um, a little bit too small. But the, the, other, the other the other one was a bit too big. So, but I, I do treasure that. And I was uh, I was I was told by a friend that. Um, I should always take something to, to the to the people, and they'll be nice to you. And you should give them something. 
and I, I ran out of time but to get a sort of a pin or a kangaroo or something but I did that actually pick up incidentally a um, uh, this this book on South Australia, which is a really nice glossy magazine about what to do in, in South Australia as a tourist thing. So I grabbed that, and fortunately I was able to give that to to Claudia, who was the my original contact and the phone contact, who was the the sales engineer who was driving the whole thing, and um, she was very very nice and um, obliging. And was, we we spent the it was a it was three or four hours it was sort of from lunch till mid afternoon and it was really very uh, nice of them to uh, um, spend the time time with me it was really I was really pretty it was really good it was a great great experience so um, we'll just see what comes of that um, um, okay so that's um, moving on and to other sort of things electrical this this is a few electric uh, vehicles I saw around the around the place that was in um, in Xi'an, it was just a little battery-powered um, car, um, battery scooters. There was, there were electric-powered um, bicycles and scooters all over the place. Um, people drive them, r ride them all over. Just they're everywhere. The little battery. It's very similar to the battery, uh, the electric um, bicycle that I made a couple of years ago using a big chunky motor, about this big. Um, yeah, this is this is what I, I saw a Tesla in uh, Hong Kong. Um, just parked in the charging station, and then uh, noticed that there were um, there were a dozen or so other charging stations all the way along here. And I thought they were tremendous. All these electric cars. Um, that was the only one. All these were petrol. <laughs> so um, that's um, I don't know what that really means. Um, the other it technically uh, based thing or related to electric cars was uh, when I was in Shanghai. Um, in, I was uh, reading the paper in the, in the morning as, as I was doing, and uh, as I usually would do, and to to um, see what was happening. And um, they told me that it was the last day of the consumer electronics show for um, in, in for, this, for Shanghai. So I thought, let's see if I can get to this place. Um, I was staying up here in a, in a hotel here, and um, to give you some idea of Shanghai, there there are sort of as I, as I know, there are two parts to it. There's, this is the old part here on the, on the left, uh, essentially, and there's a, a special a row of buildings called the, the Bund here, which are very famous, substantial old buildings which are put there about the early, early last century um, uh, when the um, colonial people were in sort of power. And, and on the other side is Pudong, which is where all the modern skyscrapers are. Um, and I was told that uh, where this um, where this um, a consumer show was was held it was about here somewhere. In the, there was a convention centre here, so I got jumped in into a, this, this subway and got to here and found got got up there and found it was the it was some pharmaceutical um, uh, show or other. So that wasn't the right place. So uh, they got me. I showed them the, the address again and um, uh, got into a taxi this time and. Uh, uh, took my life in my hands just to go just a few, it was only a few kilometres, I really didn't know where I was going but it turned out it was down here. Um, anyway, I get to get to here and to give you the size of the, the idea of the size, this is a, a square mile of, of Adelaide, so um, Adelaide sort of sits here and so out here is, um, it's only actually sort of six or eight k's away but it's, but it's all fully um, fully built up the whole, the whole area area. When you get to here, this is the actual, about the right size of the um, convention centre to scale. So this is actually yeah, bloody enormous. Um, so I get there, this is actually, um, what you see here is actually a, a model that, um, of the whole city, but, um, but I, was, um, I was dumped off in the taxi out here. Um, and uh, and um, I was assured the ta the taxi driver assured me this was the right place. All right, anyway, I got out here. There was another show here, and this time it was the um, um, injection moulding um, world congress. So um, that was interesting, but sort of not not quite as interesting enough to stay. So um, I had to walk all the way along here, which is about you know, about a mile. <laughs> uh, Along past all these just, uh, buildings, um, and eventually uh, got to the place, and had to, had to stand up in the queue with all the other people and pay my hundred 
URN, which is about $20, $20, and at last I was in the place. And then once I got in there, it was just um, full on um, consumer electronics. Um, in particular, there was a, um, a thing that Audi were working on, which is this um, um, inductively, uh, inductive charging method, which they claim they've nearly got um, uh, perfected and are, and are about to sort of release it in the market. And there, there are many um, uh, manufacturers doing this, and uh, they're all looking to get a, um, a standard, the international standard, um, agreed upon. So that they, once that's agreed, they can start sort of move, uh, moving into a production um, environment and start building them, uh, building, building them in for, for production. This one here is um, an Audi one, and it's, you see there's a concertina arrangement here where it's designed to move up and down from the from being on the in the floor up into um, the appropriate height just below the the, the coupling device that's on the car. So that's uh, um, it's the way that's um, intended to work, and it's it's uh, optimised for 3.6 kilowatt uh, power transfer, which is the maximum uh, available out of a standard sort of 10 amp or 15 amp outlet, be 15 amp outlet. Um, um, so that that will be the sort of the industry standard where they can they can they're designed to be used from a, a standard PowerPoint essentially. Um, another thing I saw was a head-up display, which is um, these are these are common in um, in fighter aircraft, military aircraft, and in, in other aircraft. And this is um, a development which is being put into uh, into a. Um, commercial and of normal vehicles. Um, driverless vehicles were were, were big. Um, these are these are piloted in some some way there but there's some kind of um, automation associated with, with them. Another one of them is Mercedes Benz <coughs> where where the driver is um, it can can just get the thing going and then turn around and um, and this is this is a full-on car. Not it wasn't made out of. It didn't appear to be made out of <coughs> plastic or anything. It looked like it was a, a proper pre-production sort of car. So there's there's millions of dollars being invested in in, in getting that that far. Um, and these were um, a couple of, a couple of other cars which are full of smarts, full of. Um, um, Navigation capabilities and, and driver driving sort of functions and uh, um, all these sorts of things they just seem to be out there almost um, you know about to um, be launched into the marketplace. And a few other things I saw there was a there were shoot 'em up games like just firing bullets at a screen. Um, this is a a simple um, low end uh, 3D printer. It was just a few hundred dollars. I, I, that's not really new, I don't think, really, anyway. I mean, they're quite common now, aren't they? Um, they're very familiar. These things here, you can buy these from from um, Harvey Norman. They're just, uh, the, but the whole range was there. You know, all these um, um, radios and audio um, hi-fi things. And this one here was a, uh, a no, no glasses 3D thing, which is a... Um, a screen you can just look at without glasses, and it's actually presenting a three-dimensional image on a, on a screen, which is um, clever. Um, and then, um, so uh, that's just um, something that one, uh, yeah, the it's the work health and safety issues in China. Are, they're, they're struggling hard to uh, get um, get up to grow. That's um, but it, it, it just looks a bit dangerous, that. Ouch. <laughs> um, so I've got a few more on, on the tourist side. Do you want to do go through? Had enough? I've got um, just about Yangtze River or something, just a few minutes about that. Yeah. Let's do it. Um, OK. The Yangtze goes from, um, uh, this my tour went from Chongqing <coughs> to um, Yichang here. That's a, that's a three day, day cruise. The gorges are the, the things you look look for, and they are um, there are three separate gorges down here. And at the end, there's a, um, uh, a, a an enormous um, lock system and a, and, a, and a dam to hold the water back in order to stop flooding downstream. Is the idea of the whole thing? Um, there's a there's a, a difference in um, 
Uh, the, the difference in, in um, a height above sea level of only about 50 metres from, from Shanghai right into, into here, into the centre, into, into Yichang here, and, um, uh, and then from, from Yichang up to... <coughs> the, the idea is, is, is the, uh, the dam here to stop the water flowing uh, out and flooding down here. Um, from all the water that comes from the upper reaches of here, the, from Tibetan. Uh, and Chongqing is the top of the um, of the uh, of the river, and in in olden days, and and probably only three or thirty or forty years ago, it, it looked like this. Uh, it's now got water. This this is this big city where you, um, where we started, but this would now be not rather be a swamp. It's actually full of water permanently now because it's been dammed up below. Um, and then all these things were relocated away from the uh, um, the water as it as it rose, as they were um, as the water was um, as the dam was taking water. That's a typical view of the of the river. And th at this point of the year, it's uh, at its low point, waiting for the rains to come from Tibet. And the the, uh, the distance here is um, is about 30 meters. So. There's uh, enough water to fill that up, and in, 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 the, in the summer rains will fill it up, and so by September this will be full. And then they use that water to generate electricity by generate, letting it out at a slow rate through the through the uh, through the dam. Um, just the levels there. Um, as the level rises, of course, this is just the pontoons out to the out to the boat, and then as you go up there, it um, it um, goes. Uh, it fills up. There are, there are about 170 of these sorts of bridges across the across the river. Mag a huge, enormous, just full-on bridges. Um, these are the there are there are sort of two classes of, of boat on the river. One's for the um, this is the, this is the the one we were on, um, which was sort of a farmer's boat, and then the other store. So this is this one here. The other one was more of a for the the, the locals or for the um, it was much cheaper too. Uh, but there were there was significantly the one I was on. There were about 70% um, Chinese. It was certainly wasn't at all foreigners by any means. It was a lot of a lot of people, you know, from China. The campsites around. Yeah, that, that was that's way way down. That was uh, yeah. Um, in Nanjing that happened. Terrible, really. Um, there's, there's, wherever you look, there are the new developments. All, the, all these, um, this is a town that's been built at the right level now. Um, um, just uh, new, a new city that's sort of sprung up over the, over the last um, 25 years. Um, this is, this is a, a, a pagoda that the, um, uh, it's if the the, the 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 high water mark is now at that point there, so if it's it's protected by a a caisson, which is a, a concrete structure, so that if the water if the caisson wasn't there, this thing actually be underwater now at that level there. So they they built a protective protective wall to to, to keep the water back. Um, and then we got down to the locks. Um, there were five locks. Um, this is actually a photograph of a postcard, but it's, it, the, each of these is about 30 metres high, so um, or 20 metres high, so they're all the same. They're all they're all one, two, three, four, five. So it's t taking the water level up about 100 metres, and that's uh, that's that's this the area of locks here, and over here there's the power station um, capability where the uh, um, where the water uh, is released and generates electricity. That's it there. And at the um, in the 70s, they did a, a pilot project down the river just to check the to, to demonstrate the process by doing building a smaller smaller dam. Um, beautiful buildings in the Bund, um, terracotta warriors. I saw uh, somebody said I had to go and see that, so so I did. They were pretty they were pretty impressive. It was it was good. Um, city wall in, in Xi'an, which is a, the best preserved city wall, goes all around the city. Um, 14 kilometres long, beautiful, great, great wall. A um, couple of old 
buildings. I stayed in this place here. This is a sort of a um, nice, nice hotel. It was good, um, not too expensive. And opposite the Russian Embassy, and then new stuff. This is all the little bit developments in Pudong. Pretty gaudy architecture. Go to any ghosts in here? No, they're all, they're all buried, I think, or underwater. <laughs> um, um, that's another, that's the, that's the, that's Shanghai, that's the most, uh, the longest subway system in the world, they, they claim. All squeaky clean, all look like that. This is actually Hong Kong's um, subway at six o'clock in the morning when I was uh, sort of first, first train out to get to Shenzhen. Um, I don't want to, and it's Hong Kong. Uh, Hong Kong over the last um, 100 years or so, the amount of land, land reclamation they've done. Um, they don't think much of the um, uh, 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 World Work Health and Safety as nothing to be an issue there. This is interesting. It's not, not a good picture, but this is a, um, a superconducting, a, a super, super capacitor bus. Um, I can't really read that, but just in front of a very a very high-tech device here, in front of the guys making um, uh, walnuts, the walnuts, I think he's, he's cooking, roasting walnuts. And they've still got this, this out in the street here of just uh, meat, raw meat, um, knocking down window frames in the, in the side street in, in Shenzhen, just breaking them apart right in the main street. And then um, eating street food, this is, as long as you can see it being cooked, it's fairly safe and it's, it's certainly delicious when you, when you eat it, it's, uh, it's really, really nice. Um, so just to just be, be aware that uh, if you live in, in China, you shouldn't uh, throw away a rubbish, not arbitrarily. Um, but if you feel like going to Adelaide, you can go and study in Adelaide. But if you, um, if you stay behind in, and, and stay behind in China and live there, you should make sure you uh, uh, abide by the uh, work health and safety instructions to no work after drinking. <laughs> and that's it. So.